Hello, greetings, enrichment day, differential equation. I haven't done one of these uh, before on, uh, on, on a video, so there's the first one. Um, uh, have a look at it first of all. I put the boundary conditions up on the top here, definitely a five star, and I think it's possibly in my SPX paper M, this particular one. Not sure about that, but if you want to definitely find this one, full solution, of course, um, to follow uh, at your own pace, you can actually look for in my website and the booklets advanced and the PDF is called uh, OD is systematic to somewhere towards the end of the, the booklet you will find this particular differential equation. Okay, um, let's uh, study first of all and uh, what's the features of this particular differential equation and where do we start? Okay, uh, it's a second order. All right, uh, it's non-linear because of course the dy by dx is squared disgusting uh, it has variable coefficients so it doesn't have constants there we got uh, obviously functions of y and to make it even worse uh, the dy by dx apart from having algebraic uh, uh, quantities like the y cubed there it's even got an exponential in there okay so we got everything going against us on this particular one uh, that is not so bad if you know one little fact. This is a very special differential equation and um, I'm going to write something down, so I'm going to rub off in a minute. You need to know this fact that uh, if you have an ODE, ordinary differential equation, where the independent, independent, uh, independent variable is missing. What does that mean? Independent variable, basically, there's no x in this. If you look at this particular differential equation, okay, of course, the dy by the x is or whatever, there's x is there, but I don't mean this x is. There is no, the presence of x anywhere else is not there. So if we have an ODE where the independent variable x is missing, then this requires a very special substitution then use the substitution p is equal to dy by dx it doesn't matter you might need more substitution you might need more stuff to do along the way but if you're having that kind of format and i've got tons of these differential equations uh, in this particular booklet, this substitution will get you out of trouble. Okay, so let's uh, think how we're going to do uh, deal with this particular differential equation now. So, given this fact now, okay, we're going to write this substitution. I'll, actually, I'm going to leave it here for a few minutes, and of course, we need to replace the dy by the axis and the second derivative in the differential equation. Of course, this is going to be a p here a p squared there. What about this item there? All right, we're going to differentiate d by dy of my p and I'm going to do the same thing to both sides of this transformation equation if you want. So d by dy of dy by dx. Okay, what do we get for that? Well, quite clearly that's dp by dy dp by dy. Now, what is that? Okay, differentiating something which is already a derivative, it will increase its order. So that's going to be d squared y by dx squared, but we got the chain and we have to differentiate that the dx there if you want with respect to y. This is the chain rule. If you haven't seen it at the moment, I remember myself as a student at university, actually, when I, when I started seeing things like that, it confused, it confused me a little bit, but it makes perfect sense now. Okay, so what does that uh, equal to? So this is my dp by dy. I've got my d squared y by dx squared, that's this bit here, and I need to tidy this up a little bit. And I observe, if you look at your substitution there, my p is dy by dx, so that's an upside down p. So that's in fact a one over p, that's the dx by dy, d squared y by dx squared. And if I rearrange this particular line, so I can actually say my, I'm gonna do it here and put in a box, the second derivative of y 
with respect to x. I'm going to times this p across is equal to p dp dy. And I'm going to leave it here because I'm going to start my transformation. I'm going to clear the board a little bit. And uh, while I'm clearing the board, those who have done uh, mechanics or familiar with mechanics, this is a, a kind of transformation you've seen before. It's not written obviously with p's. I'm going to give you an example in a second. It's when you're having um, the equation of motion and the force is a, is a function of the velocity or displacement of both. For example, when you're having equations like mx double dot is equal to a function of the velocity or the displacement of both. So x comma v, uh, sorry, comma v in its most uh, general form. And then you're writing the acceleration as m v dv dx. And you have kind of memorized this kind of uh, thing. I certainly have done, uh, uh, but of course I can prove it and you should be able to prove it if you need to. It's exactly the same uh, setup because of course that's the second derivative again. Okay, so let's leave that for the time being. Let's for, and let's start uh, transforming the differential equation bit by bit. So I'm gonna have, first of all, y squared minus two y. And uh, my second derivative is now p dp by dy plus y squared minus two. This I call the p, so it's p squared minus 4y cubed, uh, let's put the exponential next, and the dy by dx is in fact the p, is equal to zero. So let's, uh, I'm gonna write the substitution we're using up here. Uh, I, I don't think we'll probably need it for anything else, but let's write it. p is dy by dx. So this is what we used and this I don't think we need it anymore. We're gonna start now tidying up this ODE and hopefully uh, we can do some things uh, with it now. Okay, where do we go from there? First of all, P, P squared P, we can actually tidy this up a teeny weeny bit. So DP by DY plus uh, Y squared minus two, lots of P. And we're gonna lose the P from this term. And let's see what we got so far. This now has reduced to a first order differential equation. Okay. Um, and with first order differential equations, we like to write them in a special form uh, because sometimes we can find integrating factors and things like that. So I'm going to rewrite it. So my, first, my next line would be dp by dy plus this term now will become y squared minus 2 over y squared minus 2y and I'm gonna put the p next to it and that's gonna be now uh, minus uh, 4y cubed e to the minus y over y squared minus 2y is equal to zero. This is now a standard first order differential equation and it makes sense to look for an integrating factor using this particular function of y. So I'm gonna do the integrating factor here somewhere. So the integrating factor we should know is e to the integral of y squared minus two over y squared minus 2y dy. Okay, what can we do with this particular one? First of all, it's improper. So there's a factor of one in this particular uh, rational expression. And also it will go into partial fractions eventually because that is y, y minus two. So I'm gonna do it step at a time. So it's going to be, yeah, I could have worked just with this particular quantity. I'm gonna do it as I'm going along. So first of all, I'm gonna do a manipulation to divide it out. So uh, that's gonna be y squared minus two y. And on the top, in order to split it, there's my y squared. I'm gonna create a minus two y, so it splits. So I'm to cancel it now, so plus two y. And then there's the minus two, so that's exactly the same. dy, and that is equal to e to the integral of 
Okay, uh, this will now divide into a one, this quantity here. So it's gonna be one plus two y minus two over, I'm gonna write it in a factorized form now, y, y minus two, dy, and that is equal to e to the integral of one. And I'm gonna do my partial fractions there. I'm gonna do it by cover up, so by inspection essentially. You can do, of course, separate workings if you want for this. Uh, when y is equal to zero, I'm getting uh, minus two over minus two, which is one. So that's this uh, on the top of the one over y. And if y is equal to two, I'm getting two times two, which is four. Take away two is two, two over two is one. They're both ones. Let's just double check it very quickly. y plus y is two and minus two, yeah, it's correct. And I can squeeze my dy there. Okay, so now I can integrate that very easily. So that's going to be e to the y plus log y plus the log of uh, y minus two. You can put mods if you want. Okay, and then uh, probably the better way to write this is to split that into e to the y times e to the log of y times e to the log of y minus two. And this will give me eventually e to the y uh, times y times y minus two. I wrote it in a very stupid way. So uh, I'll write this at the front. I'm gonna rewrite it as y, y minus two, e to the y. So that is my integrating factor. So this equation can be made exact so I'm gonna clear the board a little bit. I hope you followed all of this. Of course, we are now attempting five-star questions and therefore I won't be showing detailed workings for the obvious. If you didn't quite follow this, as I said, this particular question, you can actually find uh, in one of my booklets. For, so you will have more detailed workings or you can pause your video and add the extra steps as you're going along. Okay, so this is what happens now to the differential equation. So I'm looking at this line here. I found my integrating factor, which is this quantity here. So using the standard now methodology, d by dy of p times my integrating factor, p y y minus two e to the y. And uh, I need to multiply the whole equation by this integrating factor. Here, I didn't actually, I forgot to move that to the other side. I hope you, you let me, and uh, I'm going to put equal there, okay? And I'm gonna lose the equal to zero. So I wanna save myself a step, and I'm gonna do the same thing to the rest of the equation, which of course, it is now equal to four y cubed e to the minus y over, uh, let me write in factorized form as well and then to multiply this side by the integrating factor, which of course is y, y minus two, and e to the y. And I think you can see this is actually massively reducing loads of cancellations. I hope you can see them. I will clear the board and hopefully we'll finish it very, very soon. I don't know what else we have, might have to do, but it doesn't look too bad at the moment. So this substitution, works very, very well. So, okay. Uh, if you look at the right hand side, goodbye, my friend, goodbye, my friend. And e to the y times e to the minus y is one. So this actually has reduced to just simply four y cubed. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, so we have now p y, y minus two, e to the y, is equal to the integral of four y cubed integrated with respect to y, which of course it will give us now py y minus two e to the y is equal to y to the four plus some constant. I'm gonna call it capital A. Um, and I'm gonna evaluate this constant, uh, I think straight away. Uh, I wanna get uh, rid of it if I can. So we need a condition that involves the P, because remember P is dy by dx. So let me actually put it in. Uh, so that says dy by dx, that's your P, you see up there, and y, y minus two, e to the y is equal to 
y to the 4 plus a and we'll apply the boundary condition uh, and the boundary condition is 1 over e negative second derivative evaluated at y is equal to 1 so that's 1 times a minus 1 there e to the 1 is equal to uh, 1 to the 4 plus a and what happens there we're going to have minus times and minus a plus the e's will cancel so it's a 1 is equal to 1 plus a so a in this particular case is in fact 0 so that's even better so let's throw this a away so this is now how far we've gone with this particular quantity and we're going to have of course we haven't finished because we have still another differentiation to no, another differentiation another integration to do rather because of course we still got that p in there and the p is dy by dx so let me just rewrite it here dy by dx times this quantity is equal to y to the 4 what kind of differential equation is that is that difficult to solve i don't think so this is uh separable isn't it so let's separate the variables. So how are we going to do that? Uh, we're going to leave the dy where it is, put an equal here and the dx on the other side. We have no x's, so one in there. And this now will be all of this mess on the dy side. So it's going to be y, y minus two, e to the y over y to the four okay and we need to integrate both sides so i thought our troubles were over when i saw this but uh, that doesn't look pretty does it okay some kind of integration by parts by the looks of things but uh, where do we go with this particular one let's first of all um, just do a little bit of a tidy i'm going to uh, multiply the brackets split the fraction and times it by the exponential so uh, it's going to be a 1 over y squared minus uh, 2 over y cubed e to the y dy let's integrate that that's x plus a constant b let's say but uh, the, all the action is how on earth we're going to do this particular integral okay uh, i'm going to split the fractions further into two uh, separate integrals 1 over y squared e to the y minus 2 over y cubed e to the y again uh, actually I should have really uh, written it two separate things completely uh, yeah I will do that I think so dy minus uh, 2 e to the y over y cubed dy is equal to x plus b and now we need to take a deep breath and just think what we're going to do with this um i think um this uh, brings back memories i think i've done similar things in the past uh, uh, i have some questions in uh, my integra as pure integrations um if you look at just think for a second about the exponential to the y will differentiate slash integrate to itself when we do integration by parts but i'm looking at this 1 over y squared and technically the 1 over y cubed the 1 over y squared will differentiate to something which is 1 over y cubed essentially and vice versa the 1 over y cubed will integrate to something which is uh, resembles this bit here so uh, I, I got a feeling that if we do integration by parts in any of those two only on one of them okay it might cancel the other okay so it doesn't really matter on which one um uh, i don't know if you're following my logic and what i'm looking at uh, it's not guaranteed that it will work but i have seen patterns and themes like this in the past so i'm prepared to give it a go and if it doesn't work we'll see what we're going to do so uh, i'm going to do my integration by parts let's say for this one okay so i'm going to put a little cross here i'm going to differentiate i want to differentiate that because i want to create a y cubed so 1 over y squared differentiates to minus 2 over y cubed. That looks even better now because I've got a 2 there. Okay. And the e to the y comes back to e to the y. So remember this integration by parts is for this particular 
uh, integral only. So I'm going to have uh, 1 over y squared e to the y. That's the product of this column. Take away the integral of this diagonal. And it's minus, minus. So it's going to be plus here. Uh, 2 uh, e to the y over y cubed dy. Brilliant. I mean, that, that's, that's it. It's done now. Okay, this now is exactly the same thing. 2 e to the y over y cubed dy. And of course, this 2 will cancel is equal to x plus b. And uh, I think after that, it's just a case of putting our last boundary condition finishing off. So these two integrals will cancel. So what have we got so far? We got uh, 1 over y squared e to the y is equal to x plus a constant. Okay, so I have an implicit solution which I'm prepared now to uh, uh, put the very last condition. The last condition now we need obviously an x. Uh, what do we have? Well, x is equal to e. So uh, y is equal to 1. There's no derivative. So it's going to be 1 over 1 squared. This is 1. Let me just write 1 over 1 squared. e to the y is e to the 1 is equal to x, which is e plus b. So again, another 0. e is equal to e plus b. So b is in fact equal to 0. And uh, I'm not going to be rewriting this. I'm sick and tired of rubbing on this board. So um, this is the solution, which probably, it would probably be better if we just uh, times this across. So the solution to this particular differential equation is in fact, e to the y is equal to xy squared. And I think that was uh, quite a beauty, but quite something, okay? Uh, please uh, remember the, the important thing. I'm just gonna do a little recap. Um, I mean, the, the individual workings were not the issue. I mean, you can get all sorts of things. You can hit a brick wall. Uh, but uh, the important thing is if you have a differential equation where the, uh, the x variable, the, the, the independent variable is missing, then please try this particular substitution because it will definitely simplify things. But obviously, you're not guaranteed that you'll be able to, to finish the question. Okay, I hope you find this uh, interesting and challenging. And on that note, who's laughing now? I hope you get back uh, with, with me for another lecture very, very soon, guys. Okay, see you soon. Bye.